Hi everyone, thank you very much for coming to this talk today. Uh, I'm super excited to tell you a little bit of updates on uh, what we believe is our path to bringing the, the new React Native architecture to the open source community. Mandatory slide about myself. My name is Nicola Corti. I work as an um, Android engineer in the React Native team at Meta. And you can find me online as Corti Nico, either on GitHub or on Twitter. So let's jump straight into the content, because we have so much to cover. And if today you were to search React Native new architecture on Google or on YouTube, you will find actually plenty of content. And specifically, I want to focus on YouTube. You will find quite a lot of videos. And some of those are a bit like old, let's say. We started talking about the new architecture in 2018. I really recommend those videos, by the way. Uh, but if you look at the last one, that's from my colleague Joshua at React Native EU 2021. And you can see how long it took for us to fully understand the scope of the new architecture and roll it out to the Facebook app. So I want to start from this last talk that Joshua gave last year. And if you haven't seen it, please make sure you take it uh, back from the, from the YouTube history. And in that talk, he showed us a timeline. The timeline started in Q2 2018, as I said, when uh, the React Native team started to consider this major rewrite of, of the core of React Native. It turns out that the Facebook app, it's quite complicated as more than 1,000 surfaces that are using React Native. And every team has been using uh, edge cases of the API or has been squeezing the performances out of React Native old architecture to try to save and improve those screens as much as possible. So rolling out the full new architecture to every screen was actually like a big endeavor. But now we are done. Like end of 2021, we officially updated all the surfaces of the Facebook app to the new arc. And so what's, come, what's next? So Joshua left us there mentioning that what's next is the open source community. And that's where uh, we are now. It's 2022. We worked a lot to prepare content that we released to the community to help empower developers in the world to try and experience the new architecture, let us know what is not working for them, and adapt our infrastructure to everyone out there. So before we deep dive in the content, I actually want to do one step back and uh, talk about the why. Because a lot of people actually ask me, like, well, how should I convince my customer to migrate to the new architecture? Or what is the real goal of the new architecture? Well, you should think of the new architecture as a major refactoring of the core. And if you still haven't got why we did it, well, it's all about the bridge. The new architecture allows to get rid of the bridge and uh, comes with a lot of um, essential niceties that comes from getting rid of this component. Moreover, we took a stance of rewriting a lot of the rendering internals they were different on Android on iOS, because historically, we used to have different implementation of the render. And they had a lot of divergence. So the new architecture goes in the direction of correctness. We wanted to develop something that is consistent across platform, has been rewritten in C++, so we can also share platform-specific optimizations. For example, on Android, we uh, developed a feature called view flattening, which allowed to um, have some performance improvements on Android. And that was Android only, historically. From now on, with the new architecture, we can develop improvements to the core and roll out new features that all the platforms that are built on top of the new arc will benefit. Moreover, we also took a bit of a look of the developer experience internally at Meta. And we believe that one thing that was missing in the old architecture was type safety. That's why we built a component called the Cogen, which allows us to bring type safety into the formula. And also, there are a lot of new capabilities. Some of those are, let's say, not public yet, but you might find them in the Git history of React Native. We're just not ready enough to publicly 
um, talk about them in a way that we feel that uh, our users will be uh, comfortable using them. But rest assured that there are specific projects and features that builds only on top of the new architecture. Moreover, if you're aware of React 18, a lot of the new features of React 18 runs only on the new architecture. And I will talk more about it later in the talk. So whenever you look at the documentation of the new architecture, you will find several names and components coming over and over. Uh, we tend to refer to those as pillars. So the new architecture is composed by several pillars. First, the new render called Fabric. Then we have the new native module system called Turbo Modules. We have the CodeGen, which is like an optional component which essentially generates code for you. And then we have the full bridgeless mode. This is one of the features that we have on main, but we are still like not advocating as much. But rest assured, because uh, more docs for this will come as well. So I want to uh, spend a couple of seconds on the code gen, because um, again, a lot of people sometimes ask me, like, hey, do I need to use the code gen? Uh, what is the value of the code gen? And we talked about type safety, but what is the catch here? So uh, what we do internally at Meta, and one, what we suggest people to do, is to uh, use the code gen to define those spec files. So essentially, you will have your specification of your API in a TypeScript file like this one. And you will declare what your Turbo module will do in this case. Here, you're saying that you have a function called answer the ultimate question, which takes an input a string and returns a number. And you're going to register that. So the focus of the code is all about here, this function, answer the ultimate question, and the types in input and in output. What the code does, it collects this information and creates specific code for every platform. So for example, on Android, what you will have is an abstract class with constructor and everything needed, and specifically, one abstract method that you, the developer, need to implement. In this case, again, answer the ultimate question, Java string in input, and a double in output. On iOS, we're going to generate code that is equivalent. So you're going to have, in this case, Objective-C code, which is a protocol that you need to implement. This component, again, is optional. We are going to generate code because internally we realized that a lot of developers were copying this code over and over. And so we felt like here there is opportunity for optimizing. Uh, we totally invite people to look at them. But again, uh, this whole new architecture setup works also uh, without the code gen. I also want to spend some time on a couple of improvements we are shipping alongside the new architecture, because they're quite critical. Uh, you might see changes going on in the setup of projects, and you might not wonder why we did certain changes. So I want to take a stance to reiterate on some of those. First, the build tools. As you probably know, the word uh, inside Meta and outside Meta is quite different. Internally, we build everything with Buck. But externally, obviously, we can't pretend that open source project will build with Buck. So we had to adapt our infrastructure to work well outside. That means that on Android, specifically, we did a lot of work to make possible for users to also compile C++ code. That means you will start seeing files like amdroid.mk or cmake files, which contains instructions on how to build your native code. Moreover, a lot of the Java and Kotlin build logic has been moved inside the React Native Gradle plugin. That plugin is a fundamental part of the new architecture, contains all the logic to trigger the code gen, and uh, uh, it's going to be uh, basically the, the future of all the Gradle logic uh, related to React Native. So whatever now lives inside React.Gradle has already been ported inside the React Native uh, Gradle plugin, and we're going to slowly deprecate the React.Gradle in the future. Similarly, for iOS, we have uh, CocoaPods code and, and logic that has to be adapted. So you will find a lot of files.rb, so Ruby files that contains the logic to enable the code gen. Um, talking about changes that we're shipping alongside the new architecture, a couple of words on our JavaScript engine, Hermes. 
Um, you, you will find in the new, arch new architecture documentation that Hermes is the recommended engine. When I say recommended, uh, I want to stress the fact that we, we will keep on supporting uh, plugability with other engine, but a lot of our focus will be around optimizations for Hermes. So if you use Hermes, we are able to support you better. If you use another engine, well, uh, it's essentially harder for us to uh, support you in specific runtime issues that you might have. We are also moving towards Hermes being the default engine for new created projects. This is not the case yet, but we're looking into doing this change in the near future. There has been a lot of blog posts around it in the past, so uh, expect this change to come. Uh, moreover, in React Native 069, we are shipping a significant change related to Hermes, which we called bundled Hermes. Uh, what it practically means is that we are building a version of Hermes alongside a version of React Native every time. So it means that whenever you create a new project and you uh, build on top of React Native 69, you are getting an engine together with that that is assured that it works well with that specific version of React Native. Prat practically, this should have no impact on your build time, on your runtime. It should be as it was before. Uh, but yeah, like the reason why we did that is because historically, we used to have some compatibility issues between React Native version and Hermes version. So we built this uh, new integration to make sure that the engine and the runtime work well together. I also want to spend Sometimes, talking about another topic that is really close to, to my heart, which is modern languages. Uh, we have been uh, hearing the community that wants to use more and more modern languages with React Native, and let me talk a little bit about it. First, TypeScript support. Um, when we released the first version of the documentation for the new architecture, one of the biggest comments was like, I don't want to write my spec in Flow, uh, which I totally understand. That's why we spent time adapting the code gen to support both Flow and TypeScript file. So now you can have your project with new architecture, with spec file in ty TypeScript, and everything will work. For Android, uh, the modern language here is Kotlin. I'm happy to share that uh, Kotlin is fully supported in React Native. We do have some modules of the core that are converted to Kotlin, and we will be moving over and over other parts of the core. Uh, we are also working on adapting the website to be bilingual, so you will find documentation for Java and Kotlin alongside. Uh, I also want to mention that this is a community effort. So you can go on the website on this issue, 3018, and claim a page and help us migrate the website over. And finally, you can expect the new app template to be migrated from Java to Kotlin in the near future. Uh, we just haven't done it right now because we feel that the new architecture is bringing already a lot of moving parts, and we don't want to add more mm, pieces to the, to the recipe, but uh, that's our, let's say, North Star. Like, ideally, we would love uh, the template to be fully in Kotlin. As for iOS, uh, sadly, I don't have many concrete updates to share here. Uh, we are actively looking into it. Uh, sadly, the situation for Swift is a little bit more complicated due to interoperability with C++, but people are looking at that. So uh, I hope to have more news to share in the future. So as I was mentioning uh, versions of React Native, I want to take a stance to talk a little bit about the, the timeline and the versions of React Native that we released, which features they uh, shipped, and where do we stand today? So the first version of React Native that supports the, the new architecture is version 68. Here, practically, I'm a bit lying because actually the code was a main since several versions, but 68 is the first version that contains an easy way to opt in in the new architecture. So with one line, you can enable the new arc and experience it. And we tested this version in a lot of edge cases and we think is stable enough to be considered the first version of React Native that contains the new architecture. 69 uh, will contain bundled Hermes, 
which I talked about before, and is the first version of React Native that will support React 18. I'm going to talk about it in some seconds. And for 70, we already have a couple of features that, that are either lined up on main, so they already landed and they will just be uh, released as soon as we cut a branch, or that we plan to, to release, which are uh, basically close to completion, which are uh, first Android auto-linking support uh, for new architecture uh, capable libraries. We're going to add support for full CMake integration for Android projects. This will deep, deeply simplify your project setup and ideally will clean up a lot of the extra file that we asked you to create in the first version of React Native. And uh, a thing that has already landed on main is unified code gen config. We received a lot of feedback um, saying that the way how the code gen was configured between Android and iOS was not consistent. So we uh, unified that and that is already available in main, will be released in React Native 70. And for the future, well, today, infinity and beyond. Here, I like to say that some of the features that we shipped in 70 are there because people came, knocked at our door, and said, like, those three things are not working for me because. So we are keen to hear your feedback, to hear what's not working for you, to hear if there are edge cases that we haven't covered, and so, so that we can shape the next versions and prioritize uh, our development accordingly. I mentioned React 18, and I want to stress a little bit uh, on the interaction between React and React Native, because I believe there was a little bit of confusion in the community in the past, and I, I prepared a little uh, table here to re-explain it. So if you are on React Native 67 or React Native 68, you are essentially on React 17. Even if you go in your package.json and change the version there, you are still running the React 17 render. So in order to be on React 18, you need to be on React Native 69. That's the first version of React Native that supports 18. Uh, that being said, there is like a one-on-one -on -one relationship between React Native version and React version. So when you are on React Native 69, you will be only on React 18. You can't downgrade. But that, where is the catch? So React 18 comes with a lot of new concurrent APIs and features, like start, start transitions and others. And those features rely on Fabric, rely on the new architecture to run. Essentially, if you are on 69 and you enable the new architecture, you are running on React 18 with all the concurrent features available to you to use. While if you are on 69, and you are still on the old architecture, you are basically running React 18 in legacy mode. So this is a strong argument to move to the new architecture and don't miss up on those APIs. The, way, the reason why we created this setup is to allow users to slowly migrate to the new architecture. And now is the time to look into the migration, what is needed, what is missing, and so on. In a year from now, things might not look as good, and uh, like, please, take some time, look into the new, new architecture, let us know what doesn't work for you, and so on. And now, I talk a lot about docs, but actually I haven't showed anything about it yet. So let me share a little bit on which material and content we prepared for, for the community and where you can learn more about the new architecture. And I want to stress how Docs here, I think, are actually the point of everything. I remember listening to uh, the React Native show, episode 11, I think, and um, yeah, like people actually said, yeah, the New York is actually already there since a while, and no one really knows how to use it. Uh, and that's the truth. So uh, the reason why docs were not there is because, well, first, we haven't finished the rollout internally, and at Meta, we strongly believe that whatever we release to the community has been stress test inside our app. So we, I mean, cover a lot of edge cases, and trust me, we have several. So what, which are those, those docs that we, actually, that we actually released? First, there is a new guide 
in the React Native website called the new architecture. And that contains instruction on uh, how to use uh, essentially the new architecture from the perspective of a library author and from the perspective of an app author. Uh, we are also working on extending this section and adding more examples uh, and um, like essentially this first uh, guide what was released in December. In the meanwhile, a lot of things have been improved and we did like a second pass over the website. This new guide is essentially nearly ready and will be released in the, in the next future, but you will still find it here in the guides called the new architecture. Similarly, we also wor worked on a new section that you will find here on top called architecture. And this sound, might sound a little bit confusing, but that section contains deep dives. So another um, comment that we received a lot in the past is there is no way uh, to understand how Fabric works internally other than reverse engineering the code, which is not great. So we spent time writing docs. We have a first set of documentation related to uh, how Fabric works internally with diagrams and so on, and we will be extending this section in the future. Uh, we also worked a lot uh, in terms of material on the new app template. As I said before, 68 is the first version that contains the new architecture, and we adapted the template to make as easy as possible to try the new arc. So essentially, once you create a new project, create React Native in it, um, on iOS, we hooked everything inside a pod install. So normally you will pod install or the init will do it for you and that will set up the project. But now if you add this extra environment variable, new arc enabled, uh, the project will be configured to uh, let you try the new architecture. You can just run it with run iOS. Uh, on Android, similarly, we do have a Gradle properties file with a property called new arc enabled, false, you set it to true. Uh, or you can pass an environment variable and run with run Android, and ideally everything will work as well. To be 100% sure that you're running on Fabric and the new architecture and everything, Metro will actually tell you that the app is running with Fabric 2 uh, true and concurrent routes set to true. So you are good to go. Um, I want to mention a couple of other content and material that you might find useful uh, if you want to. Um, Again, try the new architecture and report issues or problems you might have. First is the new architecture working group. So this is a working group similar to the React 18 working group that my colleagues from the runtime team uh, worked on last year. Um, and it's a discussion-only a discussion only repository, uh, which contains sections where people can interact, ask questions, uh, go into a deep dive question and tell us uh, I don't understand how this works. Can you please explain? Is this doable within your architecture? And so on. Uh, and so um, initially we thought of making this invite only and have just only like a list of people as uh, the React 18 working group was, uh, was doing in the past. But uh, we felt that uh, for the new architecture, specifically in this case, uh, we wanted to allow everyone in the community to contribute. So you can uh, fill in that form that you find on the readme and apply there. We will check your uh, application. And most of the people get approved. Uh, we received some spam in the past, so that's also a way to prevent that. And it's a way to make sure that the discussion is focused around React Native. Uh, finally, we also developed a couple of sample repositories. Specifically, there is one called the app sample repo. You will find it inside the community projects. Uh, and this contains uh, several branches that explains how to migrate one app, let's say one Android app or one iOS app, uh, from the old architecture to the new architecture. And the reason why this is, uh, I think, valuable is also because we spent time creating uh, a commit by commit um, setup, so you, you can find in the Git history all the single step that has been done, documented with a message on why that is needed. Similarly, we also have a repository for libraries. 
And here you can find, again, a turbo module and a fabric component that has been created initially as a simple component or as a simple uh, native, um, native module and has been migrated over. Finally, I want to call out some libraries that uh, wrote on the React Native Working Group that they started looking into the migration. Some of them already migrated, have a version that is compatible with the new architecture. Maybe there are some missing pieces and so on. But please, if your library is still not migrated or you still haven't considered the new architecture, now is the time to look into that. And my hope is that I don't know, in six months from now, in a year from now, when I search React Native New Architecture, uh, your blog post will appear there on how you migrated your app to the New Architecture or on which pain you faced or why this was not the right thing for you. Like, we are here for celebrating, but also to un for understanding what's not working and adapting. So we are keen to hear your migration story and we really want to hear what doesn't work for you. So with this, um, I want to thank you very much for listening. Uh, I want to recall that React Native is developed by Meta, but is one of the projects that we believe is most community driven that we have. And we are so looking forward to your contribution to React, React Native, Hermes, Metro, or any other projects. So, Again, thank you very much for listening. I'm happy to connect with you. And I'll see you on the GitHub issue tracker or on a pull request.